This is Dr. Krauss with part four of my Bodhi Plot series. I want to talk about how to interpret Bodhi Plots, by which I mean, given a Bodhi Plot, can you find the corresponding transfer function, which is essentially system identification in the frequency domain. Um, sort of what we're going to do is take the Bodhi sketching algorithm and use it to guide us in interpreting or kind of teasing out what the Bodhi Plot is. So when we went to sketch them, we looked at the low frequency behavior and said, is it zero degrees phase, plus or minus 90, plus or minus 180? Then we would know whether or not we have a first order pole, first, you know, first order integrator, first order differentiator, second order integrator, second order differentiator, or none of those things. Similarly, does the slope start flat? Does it start going down at minus 20 dB per decade? Does it go down at minus 40 dB per decade? Those are first and second order integrators. Or does it go up at plus 20 dB per decade or plus 40 dB per decade for single or double differentiators? Again, slope is flat, phase is zero, means we have none of those things. And then we continue moving up in frequency until we come to a pole or zero, and then we would increment or decrement our slope and increment or decrement our frequency um, asymptotes in both cases. Um, and so like I said, we're just gonna kind of do those things sort of backwards to squeeze out the, I don't know if it's really backwards. It's kind of a weird way to say that. Kind of following the same approach of starting at low frequencies, going up in, in frequency and looking for changes in slope and changes in phase to help us identify where there are poles or zeros. So we start at the low frequency. Is it plus or minus 20 B per decade, plus or minus 40 dB per decade for the slope? Is it zero? Is it plus or minus 90? Is it plus or minus 180 for the phase? Obviously it's possible to have triple or quadruple, like it's mathematically possible to have triple, quadruple, whatever uh, integrators and differentiators. Practically speaking, I don't know if I've ever really seen more than a double differentiator, double integrator. So double differentiator is an accelerometer, a double integrator is a pure mass. That's kind of all that I've really seen practically. So that's all I'm gonna talk about. And then you just move up in frequency. Every time there's a change in slope or phase, that means there's a pole or a zero. Um, if you're talking about a linear system, then your changes in pole and phase should go together. Uh, two common nonlinearities you should be aware of are friction, which tends to show up at low frequencies. It tends to prevent, especially systems that have pure integrators, from getting to really high amplitudes. And it just kind of makes noisy, messy things happen at low frequencies. And then the time delay associated with digital systems especially um, can cause phase roll off near the Nyquist frequency. Yeah, even when you start to get within, I don't know, an order of magnitude of the Nyquist frequency, you should kind of be aware of it. Um, but it does not affect the magnitude, it only affects the phase. So just have those two nonlinearities in the back of your head. Um, but otherwise, every time you see a slope or a phase change for a linear system, they should correspond. And the slope phase change, you just got to decide, is this a pole or a zero? Is it a first or a second order? Um, now, obviously, if you have a really complicated system, you could have poles and zeros on top of each other. You could have higher order stuff. Um, but in general, those are the, the questions you're asking yourself. So if I'm trying to decide, um, is this a pole or a zero? I can look at the slope of the dB magnitude. And if I see that the slope has decreased 20 dB per decade, then that is a first order pole. If it's decreased 40 dB per decade, that is a second order pole. Zeros do the opposite. So if I see the slope increase by 20 dB per decade, that is a first order zero. If I see it increase by 40 dB per decade, that's a second order zero. And then second order, Poles and zeros generally have peaks and valleys, uh, respectively, but only for low damping. So just because you don't see a peak or a valley doesn't mean you can rule out that it's second order. You should check the phase. Um, there's a lot of information in the phase. Um, so an overdamped second order system might not have a peak, but it will still have a 180 degree phase shift. Now, if you're paying attention, it should have minus 40 degree per decade slope change. But sometimes if things are not well spaced out in the frequency domain, then it's not as obvious sometimes to see the phase changes. I'm sorry, to see the slope changes. So first order poles subtract 90 degrees in phase. First order zeros add 90 degrees in phase. Still a typo there. Um, second order poles subtract 180 degree phase. Second order zeros add 180 degrees to the phase. So I've got a couple of examples ready to go. Um, I had a problem the first time with my document camera software, so hopefully this is ready to behave for us. So this is example one. 
Um, and so uh, somehow I got cropped. So this is dB magnitude, this is my phase. And like we said, start off at low frequencies. I see a slope that looks like it's probably going down at minus 20 dB per decade. I could get a ruler out and kind of double check that if I wanted to be clear. But the bigger giveaway is that my phase starts out at minus 90 degrees. So I know that I have a pure integrator at low frequencies. And then, um, again, I've got a little bit of a peak here. So there seems to be an indicator of a second order under damped term where I've got, so this is minus 0.1, or sorry, 10 to the minus one, so 0 0.1, 0 0.2, somewhere in the 0.25 hertz range, so times two pi. Um, I've got some kind of a, I don't know, I would guess a zeta equal to 0 0.3 based on experience as far as the peak height and how fast the phase changes. Um, but the other thing to note, so again, because I've got this pole, I've got a slope here, it's not necessarily obvious that there's something going on in the magnitude section of this, but if I look at this phase, the phase clearly comes from minus 90, not all the way up to zero, but up a ways. And so that's telling me that somewhere in this region, I have a zero that's causing my phase to increase. Like I said, the slope is a little bit obscured by the fact that we had this peak thing going on, um, but the other thing we see is that our phase, so we expect a minus 40 dB per decade slope from here to here because of the second order pull, but I don't think this slope changes that much. We would also have expected a minus 180 degree phase change, but we don't go from minus 90 to 270, we go from minus 90 to minus 180. So something added a 90 degree shift in our phase, and so I'm guessing that there's a zero somewhere in the neighborhood, so this would be point oh, so it's 10 to the minus 2, point oh 0.01, one, point oh two, point oh three. so somewhere in the z is equal to 0 0.04 times 2 pi uh, range. So I've got a zero in there, I've got an underdamped second order pole here, and I've got a pure integrator. So I know for this example that my transfer function will take the form s plus z in my numerator, s, s squared plus 2 zeta omega n, s plus omega n squared in my denominator. And again, the reason I know that, pure integrator, under damp second order pole, this phase thing is definitely telling me there's a zero. And so I feel very, very confident of that. And I've got rough numeric values of what I expect for zeta and omega n. So I could check that. I know the code that generated this Bode plot. And so if I went over to here, this is G1. You can see that that is the same Bode plot. And so if I just looked at its um, form, this is it. I could also say, what are my poles and what is my zero? Now I said Z was roughly 0.04 times two times pi. So that's not, I mean, Bode plots are always going to be, uh, because it's a logarithmic scale, there's going to be a little bit of inaccuracy. But I would say that's not bad for the zero. And then if you remember the form of a second order, so the, the zero, the pole is going to be uh, negative zeta omega n plus or minus j omega d. So if I'm saying that Omega n is roughly that, and I'm ass asserting a zeta of roughly that. So we're saying, for this example, omega n1, I'm claiming is about 2 point, or 0.25 times 2 times pi, and that zeta is roughly, and I'm kind of guessing pretty badly on that. Then it would turn out that omega d1 was equal to omega n1 times the square root of one minus zeta one squared. Uh, that's not a square, there we go. And so um, zeta one times omega n one is the real part of my pole and omega d one is the imaginary part of my pole. And those would then be in radians.
And so it turns out that it was 0.41. I ended up at 0.47 and 1.55 and I ended up at 1.49. So, and again, if I wanted more accurate information and I had the data corresponding to this, then I could do a scipy optimize.fmin kind of curve fit and come up with real numbers. But what I'm saying is that just by looking at this and picking things off of the logarithmic frequency scale, I came up with the correct form and I came up with not bad numbers to get me to this transfer function with these poles and then here's the pure integrator and this zero. So that is the power of Bode. So let's do quick two other quick examples. Um, flip back to my document camera. So this is example two. Um, I think I've allowed more poles in this one from the looks of it. Again, there's been some cropping. This is the dB magnitude. This is the phase. Again, I see an initial downward slope and I see a minus 90 dB per decade. So I recognize there to be a pure integrator. I come to this point and again, I see a peak. And I see that peak at somewhere between, so I'm going to call that 0, 1, 5 times 2 times pi. Um, and my phase does go from minus 90 to roughly minus 270. So I don't see a 0 in here, so I'm, I'm good with that. So I'm going to call that omega 1 for my pole. And then I do see a phase recovery jumps up 180 degrees. And along with that, I see a corresponding valley. So again, this is probably a zeta in the neighborhood of 0 0.2, 0 0.3. Here, I missed the value, but just a little bit. So this is 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, pretty close to 0 0.4. So I'm going to call this omega z of 0 0.4 times 2 times pi. And I'm going to say zeta z, I'll call this one over here zeta 1, is, um, again, approximately maybe just a little bit less. So I'm going to go with 0 0.2. And again, if I was just looking at the mag magnitude slope, it's not obvious necessarily. Well, maybe you can kind of see something in there if you really, really look for it. But at the phase, it's really clear that I go from minus 90 back down to minus 180. So somewhere in this region, there is a first order pole causing a minus 90 degree shift. And I'm going to call that, so this is uh, 10, 9, 8, Seven. I'm going to call that a p of approximately 7.5 times 2 pi. So again, pure integrator, phase change, and a little bit of peak. It makes that pretty obvious that that's an underdamped second order. 180 degree phase increase in a valley make that pretty obvious that that is an underdamped second order zero. And then not super obvious in the phase. I think it would be, or in the, sorry, in the dB magnitude, I think that would be possible to miss that. It's just saying this is the valley and then this is my slope. But the phase makes really clear that there's another first order pole there. So that was example two. Let's uh, flip over to here. This is the code that generated that and there's the corresponding Bode plot. And so there's the transfer function my poles, so this is the real pole at negative 33.7 radians per second. There's the pure integrator, and then this is the underdamped second order pole. So let's compare those to the numbers I came up with. So I said 7.5 times 2 times pi. Um, so I'm saying 47, the real answer was 34. So that was probably really my worst uh, numeric estimate so far. And then I said, oops, um, an omega z of 0 0.4 times 2 times pi and a zeta z of 0 0.2. And so omega z times zeta z would give me a 0.5 for the real. Ooh, again, I'm, I'm not nailing that. So my zeta looks like it's probably a little high. Um, and then I would have an omega dz that is 
omega z times the square root of 1 minus zz squared. The echo of that back is. Um, and that one's not so bad. So 0.25 ish, and the real answer is 0.277. Um, and if I had, again, you would you could curve fit this and see that I was off by a little bit. And so that turns out to be a little closer, whatever. And then um, correspondingly, I also said there was a pole at 0 0.15, 0 0.015 times 2 times pi. And a z1 that I'm saying was roughly 0 0.3. And so omega d1 would be np times or np dot square root of omega 1 times z1 with an omega 1 out here. And so that is a 0.15. When the real answer was a 0 0.03. So I'm kind of not doing as well with my guesses here on this one. Um, but again, they're, you know, they're not super far off. And if you curve fit them, you would get the right answers. Um, and then correspondingly, omega 1 times z1. Whoops. Misspelled that. Mistyped it. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, okay. So this was... 0.032, and I'm saying it's 0.028, so I guess that's not as terrible as I thought. I was looking at the real part instead of the imaginary part. But um, imaginary part, I'm saying 0.16, and the real, hmm, no, that's kind of bad. Okay, so numerically, that wasn't great, but again, you could curve fit it, and I'm, I'm definitely getting the form of the transfer function correct, and then I could curve fit to find more accurately the exact values of omega one, omega one, z one, or whatever, and this pole. Um, okay, let's do one more quick example. And we'll go from there. So this is example three. Um, for whatever reason, this one did not have a cropping problem on this edge. Um, this is the first time I'm seeing that I'm coming in with a flat or a zero degree phase and a flat slope. So I have neither a pure integrator nor a pure differentiator. And then my slope kind of does slightly weird things in that um, there's a pole and a zero somewhat near each other. And so it might not be obvious that I'm pretty sure this is a 20 dB per decade. This looks like a minus 20 dB per decade. Um, and then the slope comes back to flat and the phase comes back to zero. The slope never gets all the way to plus 90 and it never gets all the way to minus 90. So my guess is that somewhere in here and then somewhere, let me think about that for a second. Um, I thought I knew what this was and now I'm not as sure. I thought this was just a first order pole and a first order zero to give me essentially a lead compensator. Um, the problem with that um, yeah, I'm not sure what I'm looking at. So the number of poles and number of zeros is equal to each other because the slope is initially flat and finally flat and the phase is initially zero and finally zero. So I feel comfortable that this is a first order zero. And then you need a first order pole to cause the phase to come back down. Um, yeah, this might not be, this would be a really, really mean finally or exam question. Um, if it were just a first order pole and a first order zero as a first order lead compensator, the magnitude would go up and then flatten back out and then stay high and the phase would go up and then come back to zero and then stay at zero. This is actually not obvious at all. This has to be a first order zero, a first order pole, another first order pole or possibly a second order pole 
and then a first order zero. So this one is either s plus z1, s plus z2 over s plus p1, s plus p2. And I would say that z1 is less than p1 and p2 is less than z2. And there's actually another less than sign. So that's option one. But it could also be s plus z1, s plus z2, and then s squared plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n squared, where zeta is large. So either of those two is possible. And then I could start to estimate where is z1, where is p1, where would p2 be, and then where would z2 be. So this is the z2 neighborhood, this is the z1 neighborhood, and then somewhere in here is either p1 and p2, or p1 and p2 are actually the same, and it's this kind of thing. So that's not a super great, I mean, it's, I think there's important things to think about about why, so like I said, if it were, I originally I thought it was just a first order lead compensator, in which case your dB magnitude would look something like that, and your phase would go like that. The, the reason that I realized this can't be the case, um, live, well recording, is that the phase actually dips back below zero. So this region in here tells me that it's not just a first order lead compensator. And by lead compensator, I would mean S plus Z1 divided by S plus P1. I thought that's what we had originally. That actually can't be the case. And then the other giveaway is that the magnitude actually comes back down instead of staying up here. If the magnitude had stayed up, that would be a first order compensator. So it's one of these two, and I don't know if you can easily tell which. Um, so let's look at the code just to have an answer to this mystery that I didn't realize was as mysterious as it really is. So there's the Bode plot. There's the transfer function. So there actually are a distinct P1, P2 and a distinct z1, z2, and more specifically, I could take that and divide by two times pi. Uh, yeah, no, I meant that. Um, and so we're saying that there's a 0 0.3 hertz and a 1.5 hertz first order poles, and then The zeros are 0 0.03, 0 0.04 hertz, and 30 hertz. Yes. So what I was saying, which I think is still true, so this is Z1, and it's the lowest magnitude. This would be P1, second lowest magnitude. This would be P2, third lowest magnitude. And this would be Z2, highest magnitude. So that agrees with what I'm writing here. And we said that Z1 is in the neighborhood of 0.04 hertz. So here's 0 0.01, 0.02, 0.03, 0 0.04. So I can believe that. P1 is in the neighborhood of 0.3 hertz, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. Um, so that's a little bit lower than I had anticipated. And P2 is about 1.5 hertz. 0.1, yeah, that's actually pretty close to where I guessed it to be. And then Z2 is in the 30 hertz range, 10, 20, 30. So this turns out to be true, and these numbers aren't bad, but this was, it was randomly generated, but this is a kind of a mean question. So just good stuff to think about, and yeah, we'll leave it at that. Thanks.